Hey guys, welcome back to another new video. So in this video, we are going to explore a custom ROM for our Samsung Galaxy S5. So as you know, Samsung Galaxy S5 released in 2014 and it was released with Android 4.4 and last update it caught Android 6.0. So today we have a ROM which is based on Android 11 and it's called C Android ROM. And it is a pretty stable ROM. So if you are using um, Samsung Galaxy S5, you can try this ROM. It is a pretty good ROM. I will say it, it will give you device a new life kind of. So we are going to explore this ROM. And if you want to know about how to install the custom ROM on your Samsung Galaxy S5 or the flashing tutorial, you can actually find those kind of tutorial on YouTube. There are a lot of tutorial available. But still, maybe in the future, I will make a full guide to install custom ROM on Samsung Galaxy S5. So today we are going to just review the ROM and the ROM link and also I will put the TWRP and GFS link in the description below you can try it from there. So the ROM is booted up as you can see and let's unlock the device. So first of all we will check our Android version and everything. So the ROM is pretty stable and it runs pretty well actually it's much better than the official ROM uh, which um, we get with our Samsung S5. So Samsung Galaxy S5, uh, the Android 6 is pretty much still usable, but the UI is so cluttery is that so it is pretty slow, and and also small like few apps will have few issues with like supporting the device because of Android version. But Android 11 is pretty recent, so as you can see, the ROM is running on um, Android 11, and this build is actually from January. 2024 so it is a pretty uh, recent build so you will not have any kind of issue with security and other things pretty new build and security patch level is uh, uh, as you can see here from 2017 but the ROM released in like 2024 so kind of working pretty much pretty well here and going with the other things the UI is pretty stock OSP based ROM so there is nothing new if you have used any Android 11 based ROM on your other device uh, with stock UI uh, that will have similar kind of uh, UI there is nothing new here so going with this device a uh, Wi-Fi internet and other things are working perfectly fine you will not have any issue as you can see I have my sim card here and it is working perfectly fine and going with the hotspot and other setting so you can share 5 gigahertz band too if you really want to share data from your device so you can do that too and going with the other things like NFC also does work here. So if you are like if you use NFC in that case you still can use NFC here. So if you go to connected device maybe and connection preference as you can see we have NFC we have printer and other things. So all those things are working perfectly fine. I haven't faced any kind of issue with uh, related to network Wi-Fi or NFC. I don't really use NFC but I did try my card and it did work actually and apps notification other things are pretty much what you get and battery backup coming to the battery backup actually the battery backup is pretty good here although as I, as you know i have reviewed this device a few days back and talked about the battery condition and other things the battery here is not really good but the device is running pretty well with this battery i haven't faced any kind of issue going with the sound and other things okay battery display so in the display section, brightness, uh, adaptive brightness are working perfectly fine. There is no uh, AOD, always on display is not here. But you can actually double tap to lock the device, which is a Bible. But uh, rather than that, uh, double tap to AWAC is doesn't work here. There is no way you can like um, do that. So double tap to AWAC is not there. And other things like if you want pure darkness you have to go to dark theme and you have to select dark mode and amulet dark usually it in default mode it will be in deep grayish type so as you can see here i don't really like that so if you want that one it will be uh, till a little bit beneficial because it will consume a little less battery if you uh, rather than if you use the wide one so rather than if you go to sound section sound and everything work perfectly fine i haven't faced any kind of issue storage as you can see uh, on default we are getting about 10 gb of free storage then 11 11 gb almost because i have installed few applications and 
privacy if you go to privacy section there are few things going on and going with the security section so uh, this one is kind of interesting so we do get fingerprint fingerprint does work perfectly fine so let me show you yes it still it is the the same way you have to like swap it and then it will work so now okay if i swap it it unlock the device sometime you don't really need to like press the button to unlock it you just swipe it it will unlock as you can see and now i have basically unlocked it but sometimes it doesn't work like that you have to unlock the device file or you have to click the button to unlock the device then you can swipe and also we got face unlock face unlock does work but it is pretty much doesn't work most of the time as you can see it is struggling but it did turn on eventually but it takes time as you can see here it did turn on so face unlock also working so but it is not really usable that much so going with other things uh, in the security section we don't have anything much here all the same things what we get and we have account accessibility setting and see android setting which uh, will give you the customization you want all the customization you want will be here so that if you want to change anything like i have changed my clock and also the battery icon i have changed it from here so you can do those things from directly from here one negative uh, like thing i have found with the customization is that there is no always like uh on a screen gesture which we get with like we getting with android 10 and 11 and other versions but there is no um on screen gestures so if i go to system gesture as you can see there is no way you can turn it on but you can turn on um navigation bar directly here if you have like facing issues with your soft buttons here you can use these buttons to navigate your device so that one is survival rather than that there is nothing much going on there are few um tweaks here and there if you want to go on all those things you can go on so all these things here you can check here so i don't really need that much of uh customization and also swipe to screenshot also work but you need to turn it on directly from here as you can see it does work but you have to turn it on and also about collaboration and other things are here going back to the device there is nothing much going on with the device right now so if you go to system section there are few things going on update to android 11 so as you can see everything here you can see the build is actually from 2024 and it's quite new build so definitely you can check this out actually then other than that there is nothing going on so now going to the application part so in default it didn't come with gapps so if you want gapps you have to flush gapps separately and after that actually uh, there are a few application came with this device default android fx browser calculator camera application so going to the camera application camera application does work perfectly fine front camera back camera and everything works perfectly fine and i did try to like install gapps here but i could not able to find a uh, usable gfs for this device if i find one i will put link in the description below you can try it from there rather than that i have installed facebook and uh, our pia uh, browser in youtube so there is an issue with youtube and play store let me let me connect to the wi-fi first so um, now the wi-fi is connected so let's check what i am talking about so now going to the youtube so if I try to load, it's like I have connected the Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi is working and it is working on my laptop too. As you can see, I'm having this issue. I don't really know why I'm having this issue. According to the Google, I have searched. Uh, it is about internet, but I did try with few other Wi-Fi and my mobile data and other things. It is still the same. And going with the Play Store, the Play Store is working perfectly fine. There is no issue. You can install almost all the application which works perfectly fine but now going with the few applications which have like pretty huge sizes like pubg mobile although it is not really recommended to install any kind of application here because it, it will struggle a lot so now trying to install pubg mobile as you can see i'm having this issue so this issue i'm having with this device but if i try other application like the smaller one if i install this one it will install without any kind of issue like if you want to install WhatsApp, Messenger, Facebook and other things, those will install perfectly fine. But it is with only with the bigger application which have like huge file size. In that case, those applications you cannot download. 
I don't really know what is the issue with these things. I could not able to find any solution for that. As you can see, the application are downloading just fine. No issue with my Wi-Fi actually. So, so that is the issue I'm having with like Play Store and with the YouTube player. But if you want to watch YouTube, you can install. There is an application called New Pipe, which is really good one actually. So the application New Pipe, you can install that one to watch YouTube. Uh, you have a ad free experience from that that uh, that application. Other than that, everything is working perfectly fine. Phone call and other things. A uh, few issues and other things like you cannot use bank apps yet because safety net is failed on this device. And rather than that, I did not find any kind of issue. I did install Magix also. So if you want to install Magix, you can install Magix too as you can see here. Magix also working perfectly fine. So if you want to root your device, you can do that too. So it is definitely recommended if your device is not a primary device for you. If you are using it secondary device for phone call and other things. Definitely go with this ROM. It's pretty good, pretty stable. Although there are a uh, few bugs here and there, but those are not really major issues. I will say it is much better than the stock ROM. And that's all about see your Droid ROM for our Samsung Galaxy S5. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Thank you.